In this one, we're going to be looking at Fedora 37. Now, I tend to prefer more eclectic Linux distros, but Fedora just got a new release and people ask me all the time what I think of the latest GNOME and GTK4 stuff, so here we go into the thick of it. Since this is the first real episode that I've done in a while, I've got lots to ramble about, but I'll save that to the end when we're playing games so I can talk a little bit about the installer. Now, I've not spent a lot of time on Fedora's installer, and I think that's a crime. It's called Anaconda, and yes, it's been around for quite some time, but despite being so simple on the outside, it has a pretty radical partition editor. There's actually two different types. One is a bit like Gparted, and the other one is a bit more conventional in what you would expect from an installer with a selection of partition types and file systems and whatnot. But Anaconda, the installer, is very simple, and it kind of always has been. It's kind of the beauty of it. And there's a post installer thingy that happens after the install, like when you're done and you reboot. Some distros like to cram this stuff into the installer, but Fedora saves the user config and account stuff until the very end when you boot in for the first time. I personally have no preference on this, but I will say that having a post install config step feels like a good bit of polish to me. And the desktop is, you guessed it, it's GNOME. It's GNOME 43 to be exact, and Fedora and GNOME ship this nice little welcome help app that shows you around. I think it's pretty good. It's been around for a few releases, and yeah, it's just a, it's just a welcome app. Now while GNOME 43 feels and looks a bit different, it's still just ordinary GNOME. There are things that I like and dislike about the new desktop. Uh, the background, for example, I don't like that one much. It changes with dark mode, which is cool, but the pillars and like the art style overall looks like something out of Day of the Tentacle, which would be cool as a homage, but it's a desktop wallpaper. Now it's been a while since I've really delved into a distro and a lot of this looks new to me, to be honest. Gnome has an overly mobile-esque theme now, like even more so than before. I think I mentioned that on the last episode of Fedora, maybe even the one before that. And maybe that's the plan for GTK4 or GNOME in general. It's certainly a look, but it's not a look I want on my desktop workstation, if you know what I mean. If you like that mobile style of design, then you'll like this. And I don't hate it. I think it would look really good on a mobile device like a phone or a tablet, but not on my desktop. And the default apps are about what you would expect from GNOME. I've always thought the inclusion of maps to be an odd one. I mean, it's cool, but it's not that useful to a regular desktop user, I don't think. And another weird one is how the image viewer is located in the utilities category, yet some system utilities, such as the system monitor and terminal, are just like out in the open. I mean, that's such like a minor thing, but there's not really much to pick at with GNOME, so I, I gotta pick something. But speaking of the terminal, Fedora uses DNF as its package manager, and there's not really a good front end for it besides GNOME software, I guess. So if you want to download something like NeoFetch, into the terminal you go. Speaking of our friend NeoFetch, the Fedora logo looks pretty cool here, doesn't it though? This is Fedora Linux 37 Workstation Edition running on the new distro Delves PC. Fedora 37 is running kernel version 6.0.7 and bash version 5.1.6. For reference, Debian Bullseye is currently on kernel version 5.10. You're looking at GNOME 43 here using Mutter as the window manager. This is Wayland all the time, so there's no X involved unless you're doing something like playing a game. And the theme is just vanilla Adwaitia with a standard set of GNOME icons, which I happen to really like. Now in terms of resource usage, Fedora has always been a mixed bag. The install size is tiny, weighing in at about 3.8 gigabytes. Most distros weigh in at about 10 and Windows takes like 40 or 50 gigabytes. But the memory usage at idle is 1.4 gigabytes, which is kind of a lot considering it's just a desktop sitting there. But the CPU load after 15 minutes was a cool 0.2. So even though it's quietly consuming RAM, the CPU isn't doing much of anything. So yeah, what's new about Fedora 37? Honestly, not much. It seems like mostly just GUI polish, and I mean, I can see that, it, it looks good, but as far as like technical stuff, not much has changed, I don't think. Fedora's always done pretty well on the distro delve set of tests. I was able to open all of the archive files and all of the document files, and all of the code and configuration files, though three code files, which are scripts, actually needed to be run from a terminal despite being marked as executable. Files just wouldn't run them, and that's annoying. 
Most of the audio files played just fine with one exception, and that was Windows Media, which, I mean, whatever. And Fedora did poorly on the video codec test, failing to play back AV1, H264, and H265, or HVEC codecs. It did well enough on the image type test, though I thought it was weird that GNOME files could render the thumbnail for the JXL image, but Image Viewer itself couldn't open it. Bluetooth discovered and connected just fine, though it's a little odd that you can only, like, disable Bluetooth from the top bar, so if you want to enable dis or discover devices, you have to dive into the settings. Bluetooth worked, and printers worked too. I just went to the printer section and pow, my printer was there. I didn't have to hook anything up. So on Distro Delves, I've always had a gaming segment at the end of the episode, and this one's not going to be much different. But the problem I've always had with it is that the numbers by themselves are just numbers. So if UniEngine Valley benchmark returned 8.6, what does that mean? By itself, it doesn't really mean anything, right? It's just a number. But that's why we need something to compare it to. And given that this is the first delve where I'm actually gathering all of these benchmark numbers, a lot of them I won't actually show you. I'm just gathering them for maybe comparison in the future or something like that. For now, I'm going to show you the gaming performance because I kind of want to see how this thing holds up. If we stick to the older games or old-ish games, we can hopefully find somewhat playable frame rates. Starting with the lowest of sample, Hitman, the performance at 1080 was abysmal and not playable. The benchmark returned 12, but in the game it probably got lower than that. Reducing the game's display resolution made it playable, but the frame rate still wasn't that great. Hitman was an early Feral Interactive port, and I'm pretty sure you can actually get better performance with this game if you run the Windows game using DXVK, but we're just using the native Linux version which is OpenGL here. Next up is Shadow of Mordor, another early Feral Interactive port. This game has always struggled with AMD graphics, and it looks like it still does. It shouldn't be struggling this hard here. I could get the benchmark to run at 1080, but the game wouldn't. It would just stop responding when it's loading in. So if I drop the resolution down to 720, the game looks pretty bad. But honestly, it's a really fun game to play, and in a pinch, I would play it. Next is Tomb Raider 2013. This one is a bit more nice about the AMD GPUs and the benchmark returned 30 frames a second, which isn't too bad. In the future, when I have a larger sample set to compare it to, I'll say more, but as it is, it's not too bad. I can play it. Remember that this is GNOME and Wayland, and that means it should be using an ephemeral X Wayland server running in the background to render all of this or show all of it or however the heck it works. And I mean, hey, that's pretty solid. And the last game on the list I'm going to show you is Dirt Rally, which I thought would make for a pretty good benchmark and system test because, you know, with driving games, you notice when there's a big frame drop, like you're going around a corner and the frame rate drops out. I mean, that's pretty noticeable. I was using the gamepad here, and I'm not very good at the game, which is fine, but I didn't notice any major frame drops. It ran just fine. Dirt Rally pulled the highest benchmark of them all at 35 frames a second at low graphics. And it is worth noting that I have the graphics settings for all the games tested here on low, but we're talking about totally different graphics engines and stuff, so the numbers between the games isn't really comparable in that way. Overall, I'd rate the gaming experience on Fedora 37 just okay. I ran into some issues trying to get Tomb Raider to play right, and Shadow Mordor just like wouldn't let me play at my native resolution, so that was a bummer. In fact, Hitman and Shadow Mordor weren't really playable at the full screen resolution at all, like even in the benchmark, so I'll keep an eye on those for the next set of delves to see if the performance is better on something else. But Tomb Raider and Dirt Rally were very playable, so that's good. So yeah, Fedora 37. Not exactly an exciting one, but it was nice and predictable, which is exactly what I need for a first delve. Or first kind of delve. Can you believe that I've only recorded three Distro Delves episodes this year? I mean, like, I've live streamed too, but those are a little bit different. I asked you guys on Mastodon what you liked about the show, and you said that it was quick to the point episodes with easy to listen to dialogue and some nice music playing in the background, so that's really what I'm going to hone in on. I know that I've said I'm done with Distro Delves in the past, but I mean, you know, my mind changes all the time, and I was feeling it, and Fedora came out, and then pow, here's a new episode for you. Sometimes that happens. I hope that you liked this one, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you want to see in the future. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.